now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, John Steed looked around at the devastation of his apartment. When Emma Peel left some minutes before, all had been as neat and tidy as usual. But after a short telephone call to Dr. Ardmore at the Heron establishment, Steed had found himself faced with a murderous attack. Keller, under orders from Jason and Loris, had left his roses and journeyed up to town with the express purpose of blasting Steed with the double-barreled shotgun that had caused so much damage to poor George XR. Steed, fleeing to the passage, grabbed a sword stick and after a salvo which blew a large hole in the door, had thrown it through the opening. Keller caught the sword stick full in the chest. No! Exit Keller, the killer. Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 6 of this story, in which Emma Peel undertakes an impersonation in order to check on the people who shot poor George Oblique Stroke XR40. Emma Peel, blissfully ignorant of John Steed's troubles, hummed a little tune to herself as she turned the nose of her car towards the English countryside. The rain stopped. The sun came out watery behind the grey clouds, but it was there. And by the time Mrs. Peel had found Sir Wilfrid Pelly's country residence, it was a lovely afternoon. Mrs. Peel parked the car. Mrs. Peel, dressed smartly in tweeds and carrying a weekend case, tripped lightly up the steps and rang the bell. Hello, you're new. Oh, take my case, will you? The place doesn't change at all, though. I, I beg your pardon, Miss, but... Where's Uncle? Uh, Uncle? Uncle Rufus. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I... Didn't Daddy phone? Oh, really, he is the limit. Never mind. Where is Uncle Wolf? Jason, yes, who is it? I thought I'd told you... Hello, you're new, too. Don't tell me the last lot couldn't stand it. Oh, Uncle is a shocker when he's working. Oh, just put that case down. Um, what is your name, Jason? Uh, yes, Miss. Yes. Oh, put it down there, Jason. I'll take it up to my room in a minute. What happened to the other maid? Um, she left quite suddenly. Oh, I see. And your name is? Loris. Unusual. Oh, how I wish Uncle would get rid of that painting. I've hated it ever since I was a small child. I actually took it down once and hid it in the woodshed. Where is Uncle Wolf? In the house or stalking round the woods? Uh, excuse me, miss, but you, you're... Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. You wouldn't know me. My name's Prunella Wentworth. I'm Sir Wilfred's niece. I do hope it's going to be a fine weekend. We had rain in town, you know. Emma Peel turned away to the window. Loris and Jason exchanged a keen look. Jason's hand slid to his jacket pocket and tightened around a small revolver. Uncle's going to be furious. He hates surprises. So that's Daddy's fault. Shocking memory. I hardly ever got to be Chief Commissioner. I'll never know. Chief Commissioner? A police. Jason's hand left his coat pocket. I asked him on the way down if he'd remember to phone Uncle Wilfred, and he said... On the way down? Then he's here with you? What? I dropped him off at friends. He's terribly old-fashioned. If I'm staying away, he always likes to know exactly where I am. I suppose, then, if I'm spirited away during the night, he's left with a line of investigation, don't you know? Oh, I always have the blue room at the back. Where did you say Uncle was? Uh, I'll fetch him for you. Um, tell him you're here. Jason can take your case upstairs. Oh, right. I'll wait in the drawing room. The chief commissioner of police. And he knows she's here. Oh, shut up, you weak kneed Neddy. I'll get Pelly. I won't tell him she's here, and then, when they meet, we'll know if she's genuine. 
Is there no other way? No way of getting rid of her? Knock off the commissioner of police, perhaps. You leave this to me. Get that case upstairs and go through it thoroughly. Check everything. You think there may be a chance that she's not? But she knew all about the blue room upstairs. So did we. We knew every inch of this house before we set foot in it. Go and check the case. Leave dear Uncle Wilfred to me. Some minutes later that Emma Peel, wandering casually around the drawing room, quietly checking the hidden microphone, heard the door open. Loris ushered Sir Wilfrid in, but clearly had not told him she was there. I tell you, there's not much more that I can... Uncle Wilfrid! Oh, how wonderful! Huh? Mm. As Mrs. Peel's arm slid round the old man's neck, she whispered... Prunella. Sir Wilfrid was a mathematician. He could put two and two together. Prunella. Oh, my dear, what a, a marvelous surprise. Well, it shouldn't have been. Daddy should have called you. But you know Daddy. Indeed I do. Uh, how is he, by the way? Oh, just fine. But you, you're looking tired. Is there something bothering you? Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, quite the contrary. Never felt better. Uh, excuse me, miss. Yes, Jason? I have unpacked your case in the blue room, as you wished. Thank you. Uh, would you care for me to run a hot bath, miss? The journey... Oh, no, not yet. I'll have one later. I'm taking Uncle Will's out. Out? I don't care if you say you feel fine or not, Uncle. You look pale. Can't we take a stroll around the grounds or a drive in the country? It's quite fine now. That's impossible. I beg your pardon. Uh, I, I mean, Sir Wilfrid has some important work to complete. Uh, you insisted that I remind you, if, if you remember, sir. Work? But Daddy told me you were supposed to be on holiday. That's why I came. Well, that's true, but there are several things I should attend to. Some, some things I can't put off. Uh, perhaps later on. Oh. oh, all right. I'll have that bath now. You know, Uncle, you're a prisoner. P prisoner? Of your work. Just like Daddy. See you later. Uh, shall I... Oh, no, no. No need to worry. I know my way. What do we do now? We continue as planned. But... But we have to be twice as careful, that's all. And so do you, Sir Wilfred. Twice as careful, or that pretty niece of yours won't remain so pretty much longer. <laughs> An establishment for George XR was still causing concern. Never in the history of computerization had so much work been put in by so many with such little effect. Ardmore and Tobin were literally sweating away over the latest operation. Swell off, please, nurse. Yes, doctor. Increased circulation, Tobin. Right, sir. You think he's strong enough to take it, sir? Well, I'll take a chance, sir. It's the memory circuit that is the main problem now. I think if we can do that, he'll pull through. The electro-lobotomy was successful. Thank heaven. It's, it's all in the mind, you know, Tobin. All in the mind. Small file, please. There. But resuscitate him. More electric impulses to the brain, Tobin. Very good, sir. <laughs> ah, ah, his dial is lighting up. There's still life there. Increase voltage. He's coming on it. George. George, speak to me. <laughs> George, speak. Can't you? <laughs> He's working, sir. He's turning out. Let me see. What's he saying? Um, it's a mass of letters and numbers. He's alive again, but he's not making any sense. But he will. Never fear, Toby. Now that George XR's alive again, we can program him. Feed all this back inside him, and then, then he's going to start coming back with all the answers. Evening came 
softly to the skies above Sir Wilfrid Pelly's home, the house itself appeared to be deserted, bleak, the atmosphere brooding. When the telephone shrilled, Jason, who was walking through the hall, gave a nervous start, paused, and picked up the receiver. Sir Wilfrid Pelly's residence? Oh, oh yes, yes, sir. Yes, well, we are doing our best, I assure you, sir. If we push the old boy any further... Uh, no, sir, of course we understand the importance, but it may take some time. <laughs> Very good, sir. We will expect you. Goodbye. Who was that, Jason? The boss. He called to say that... Yes, what? Uh, that we have to finish the job tonight. But that may not be possible. I tried to explain that, but something has happened. The time is running out. We have two, maybe three hours at the most. It's not enough. The boss is coming down here personally. Boss? Here? At midnight. He expects us to have broken the old boy by then. Right. Then we'd better get started. Get Sir Wilfred down to the cellar, Jason, at once. Friday to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.